Hello, on behalf of Roni Nilikini Philanthropies, a very warm and sunny welcome to the very last session of our track that we're co-hosting with Nudge called Resilient Societies. And we couldn't think of a better way to bring our sessions home than spend our last hour with our friends uh, from this very one of our very dear to heart portfolio, Active Citizenship. We're missing some of them, but what a fun and joyful ride this is going to be with six leaders from organizations who are co-creating um, resilient societies. I'm Sahana Jose. I lead uh, communications and storytelling efforts for Nilikini Philanthropies. Our session this hour is called Charcha Pe Charcha. I'm tempted to say it in Kannada, Charche Mele Charche. Um, and this session is really an antithesis of panel discussions. Um, no offense to the many that we've attended and hosted. <laughs> Coming back to uh, why uh, this session, it's simply to have some fun. And in the course of this one hour, we hope to get a sneak peek into the minds and lives and um, hearts of um, our leaders. And this is going to be a very lighthearted, dynamic conversation. And in the spirit of playfulness, I'm actually in my child's room rather than in my sanitized makeshift workspace. Uh, some housekeeping before we move on. Uh, we have two uh, tabs on the right hand side. Uh, we have uh, conversations. This is where you could put in your comments, your claps, your ahas, any of that over there. And then we have a Q&A tab. And this is an important one because we're going to do this hashtag AMA, ask me anything for our leaders. So if any of your team members are there, then a special shout out to them to ask some difficult questions to the speakers here. Um, yeah, and then you can also upvote in case you like a certain question. Great, so are we ready to get started with a little prayer to our internet gods so that none of our audio and video drops? Are you all ready? Okay, great. All right, so part one is sprint introductions. So each of you will have a minute to introduce yourself and your organization to our audience using a prop. Um, and we'll go in random order. And this is not a reflection of Roini Nilikini philanthropy's preference or any such thing. Um, so let me randomly call out Kuldeep uh, to go first. Yeah, hi, I am Kuldeep. I'm part of an organization called Reap Benefit. Um, you can, if you can see my background, you can see some cartoon characters. These are what we call as solve ninjas. And these solve ninjas actually solve local environment and civic issues um, and improve governance uh, from bottom up. So what we do is we work with these solve ninjas, build their civic muscle uh, in solving local environment and civic issues. And uh, this is how the solve ninjas look like. Uh, this is a hands-on hippo, this is a techno tiger, and this is an action ant. So you can ask yourself what type of a ninja you are. Thank you. No Michelangelo is there. Then. No, no, no Michelangelo. <laughs> or Shaktiman. OK, great. Thanks so much, Kuldeep. Can I ask Trina to go next, please? Sure. Um, what I brought with me today is a cup of tea, um, because uh, uh, I run Bolti Band, where we build dialogue between people who disagree with each other the most. And so when I was asking myself, what is the most Indian symbol for dialogue? It had to be Chai. Amazing. Next time we meet, we know what we have <laughs> going to have. Um, next, could I ask Rajesh, please, who is joining us at this godforsaken hour. Thank you so much, Rajesh. Um. So actually, it is not a godforsaken hour okay. because I am in Bangalore. Oh, you are. Oh. Yes. So, uh, but because I am in a hotel, I don't have an easy way to get hold of props. So I'm going to okay. make one with my fingers. So this okay. is a trunk of an elephant because we see ourselves as the midwives of wisdom. And wisdom, of course, elephants have been... Um, icons and emblems of wisdom in many cultures, in many places. And in particular, of course, we know that um, in India, just to build upon what we just heard from Tina, uh, Ganesh is the um, sort of common emblem of wisdom. So I would like to just invoke this elephant. Uh, I hope all of you, or, or many of you have had imaginary friends in your childhood or even now. And so just imagine this elephant as uh, your internal in your head friend that you talk to. 
Thanks so much, Radish. Uh, could I ask Apraj that to go next, please? Yes, hello. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Aprajita. I work with an organization called Haya. It's a youth-led feminist campaign capacity building organization. And I would like to explain, um, work about Haya, talk about Haya using this prop. It's a toolbox, um, as uh, many of us have in our houses. And I want to specifially mention it because, you know, growing up um, as a as a kid born and brought up in Chhattisgarh, Raigarh city, my dad used to have this toolbox and I was very fascinated with this because he used to just fix up everything like a pressure cooker, like a cooler, um, you know, a, a ceiling fan. And I used to feel like he's so empowered. He can just do anything. And um, I feel like as citizens, we need to have all these tools with us, uh, whether that's ability to tell stories, ability to build relationship, a campaign plan, um, a petition, um, a lot of these things. And I feel like um, if we have enough carpenters who are uh, able to build the citizen, um, we'll build a nice home. Um, that's that's what Haya is. Thank you. Amazing. Toolkits for a better, better society. Um, OK, so we have Krishna, please. Um, you'll have to unmute yourself, Krishna. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to begin by saying namaste to everyone again. Um, I actually brought a set of keys, the nearest keys I could find were my car keys, actually. Um, and I uh, am part of this initiative called Uncommon Ground, where we believe that the capacity to dialogue has multiple uses, particularly in today's polarized and divisive society. So it can be a means of conflict resolution. It can be a means of um, bringing communities together, mobilizing them. It could also be a means of collaborative problem solving. And what we are looking to do is build that capacity across individuals, organizations, communities. So dialogue is the key, people. <laughs> Holding that up again. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, Krishna. Tarun. No cha is Thanks. the key, Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I will open the door with over a cup of chai. How does that sound? Done. Done. And if it Done. doesn't open, we have the two kids to break the door. Yeah. <laughs> and then there are the ninjas who can help us figure out the nuances. <laughs> Yeah, I guess chai, toolkits, you know, keys, ninjas, and elephants. So I, I'll close the loop with, uh, you know, I'm Tarun from Intersection. Uh, what I have with me is uh, a power junction. Uh, so Intersection bridges the gap between law and action. So we distribute power. Uh, so there's power at the source, but it doesn't reach the last mile. Uh, and uh, we hope to do that with kind of enabling access to a portfolio of welfare entitlements and rights uh, to vulnerable families. So uh, it kind of brings in all the notions of supply and demand. Uh, so how do you kind of match the supply source uh, to the last mile demand? Great. Great, thanks. If you ever need some rebranding of logo ideas, now we have all of those. <laughs> Great. All right, so moving on to part two, again, in, no ran in, in absolute random order, each of you will get a question. So we're not going to repeat this question. It's one question per person. And the way I'm going to, I'm going to um, ask the question, then I'll give a suspense pause, and then I'll kind of say who this goes to. OK, so it's absolutely random. Um, and um, you feel free to respond to each other's thoughts as well. And let's keep it as light and dynamic as we can. All right. So the first question is, um, we all know you love your work. But tell us about three things that you could really do without. And I'll ask that question to Aprajita. Oh, Lord. Um, I was thinking about this question last night. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think the three things could be um, not having so many meetings um, in the week, I could easily do without that. Um, I think being away from all the banking and signing stuff, um, I am, <laughs> I'm very afraid of that. Um, I, I make it work through. Um, and the third would be, um, sorry to say this here, but also negotiating budgets with the funders. It's uh, something that I could easily do away with. <laughs> <laughs> does, does anyone else want to add anything to any of these? <laughs> Or do, does anyone the meetings. plus one to the meetings? I think Trina also said plus one to the meetings or oh, and the audience. <laughs> oh, someone said SBI bank account was on top of my list. All right, so moving on to the second question. 
Um, three things you wish you knew when you were starting out at your organization. I would like this for Rajesh. Um, all right, wow. Uh, three things I wish I knew. Number one, the first is um, problems with people multiply at, at least the cube of the number of people who are uh, uh, working with you, right? <laughs> Uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, um, because we exist, in, we have pretty much only existed in the time of COVID. It's uh, it's it's you know I wish uh, people knew how to engage on Zoom uh, better uh, and and be able to like if we had had protocols on how to do video calls. Right? So that is something that um, I wish we had known. And the third is, um, I wish I had known how strongly people believe in the things that they do. And um, because, you know, we, we exist so that people can open up their beliefs, but I, I think, underestimated the strength of their beliefs. And I wish I had known the uh, intensity with which people hold on to what they hold on. For better or worse. I think a lot of us can resonate uh, with what you've shared there, Rajesh. Thanks so much. Um, the next question is, what was the worst advice given to you that you realized way too late? I will call Tarun for this. I think the worst advice given to me was that transitions would be easy. Um, I think this connects to the last question as well. Nobody told me that you know, every time a team member leaves that I'm going to behave like a <laughs> team lover, uh, you know, who's uh, kind of lost someone. So if people told me that, I would have started an organization. So that's easily the worst advice I've got, which has taken a long time uh, to, to unlearn and, and I guess get over. Yeah. Do you have a story to share? Uh, I think too many heartbreaks. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm just maturing into an adult. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks, Tarun. Uh, there are lots of pluses to that one. Um, great. So the next question is your first act that you remember of being an active citizen. Kuldeep, can I ask this to you? Yeah, it was... Uh... World Environment Day in school, uh, grade five. So we all had to make posters and say, save the environment and uh, uh, things like that. And we go to the boys' toilet and the tap is leaking. Uh, so we go back uh, to our teacher and we felt we were very smart that, you know, we, we wanted to put the teacher in her place and see, we have these posters, but uh, look at this, uh, the tap is leaking. So she said, uh, go and fix it yourself. Uh, and uh, don't talk about it. So I, I still remember that that was the first act of citizenship, uh, boys' toilet. Uh, we didn't have the toolbox, uh, but we somehow managed it with some shoelace and uh, things like that. So that was the first act of citizenship I, I remember uh, very, very vividly. Thanks, thanks for sharing that with us. The final question of round one is, I used to think and certain things, so you can tell us what you used to think, and now I think. So how has that changed? I think I haven't asked Krishna. <laughs> Krishna, you'll have to unmute. No, I was like, oh my, I was actually groaning. So the mute was a good thing in that. <laughs> so the thing is, I think before I really got on board with uh, what we're doing, Uncommon Ground and all of that, um, I personally thought of myself as a fairly adversarial person. And also because I was good at it. You know, I'm, I'm like, I was the person who liked winning arguments, liked having the last word and walking away feeling very proud of myself for having done that. And I think what I've now learned, particularly over this journey, is that, you know, that's not really a win. And um, so I think that is really, I used to think that this was a big deal. And now I'm like, no, you had it all wrong. You had it all wrong all this while, girl, was has been my learning. Great. Um, thanks, thanks so much, Krishna. And the work that you're doing at Uncommon Ground does this at at the largest scale for so many more people now. Um, this is the time where we want to take questions from our audience. So I'm going to just give it a minute uh, for people to put in their questions 
or if any of you have questions for your fellow speakers, then this is also your turn to ask them anything. While we wait for, okay. Okay, that was the question. What questions would you like to ask each other? Could I, Aprajita, do you want to ask anything to anybody in this group? Make it difficult. I mean, a lot of them, but I'm just so uh, nervous about what questions will be thrown at you. <laughs> My mind is not working, but let me ask. Like, I really want to ask, um, what is the importance of um, mental health in everybody's um, schedule and routine um, with everything that's going on, particularly with respect to our work, because we have to be present everywhere, sometimes go deep, sometimes go broad. Uh, how do you take care of yourself? I can go first. I moved to Goa. My answer is over. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, I'm kidding, but um, Aprajas, thank you for answering that question. I think um, just we must talk about it in every forum, no matter what else we are talking about. Um, and just to share my, like personally, what I do to cope with mental health. I see a therapist, I garden, I cook as a coping mechanism more than to feed myself. Um, I have seven animals. Um, I absolutely don't work on two days of the week that are flexible and I change them. But those two days, I don't open my laptop and just have very strict boundaries around it, which are hard to maintain because sometimes people we need to work with partners, funders, etc. They will insist and it's hard to maintain those boundaries. But over time, I feel like if you establish those boundaries close enough, then partners, etc. start respecting them as well. They just know that they can't reach out at XYZ time and expect an answer. Um, yeah, so those are those are just some things I found. And I think the biggest one is to forgive myself because um, I feel like I spent the first 10 years of working in the sector blaming myself for every little problem I couldn't fix and every little life I couldn't make better. And the thing is, it's it's not it took a long time to to get over the ego of this is not my personal responsibility um and therefore it's not my fault if i fail i think that's sort of been the biggest one thanks for sharing that tina and sorry if you're making you work today on a <laughs> if it's one of your non work no i just days. picked another day of the okay, week okay great <laughs> not, so don't worry <laughs> <laughs> okay great so we do have some questions so i'm going to take uh, Shraddha's question, an incident where you totally thought the Nobel Prize is within your reach. Anyone can take, take the risk if any of you felt like it was within your reach. Krishna, did you feel like it? I mean, I can take that. Uh, the only place where I felt closest to the Nobel is, you know, probably being in the room with uh, Dalai Lama and, uh, you know, uh, President Obama. So <laughs> I don't think I'll get any closer than that, other than having some air of Nobel Prize winners. You never know, Tarun. <laughs> okay, so how did our next question? How did our leaders feel and manage their personalities transform throughout their journey? Okay, I'll, I'll I'll take that also because I that's actually coming from a colleague. So I think that's a, you know a chance to ask me something which uh, they may not have asked me directly. And uh, um, it was crazy because I think it's very difficult to let go of something like I'm 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 43 and something that's lasted you in good stead for like two three decades and you think it's you know a rule of life worth following. And to suddenly have that challenged all because you're doing some work and you're seeing the merit of it um, has not been easy. So, you know, but at the same time, you know, you, you also believe you can't not walk the talk. So how good is the work you're doing if it's not something that can transform your own life and your own personality, hopefully for the better. So it's, it's not been easy. I think, you know, sometimes it's uh, and, and here's where I'm also going to you know draw back to what Trina said about forgiving yourself. Because it's very easy to fall into that trap of saying that, hey, I just said this in a seminar or a workshop this morning and I'm doing the exact opposite this evening. And you realize it's okay. It's okay that you caught yourself and that you want to think about it and maybe do it differently next time is a little step forward. And 
slowly you try and move yourself in the same direction that you're trying to move everything else. And uh, in the longer run, I think it actually becomes a good uh, maker checker mechanism almost that, you know, you're like, if it's not able to affect me or the people around me, then how good is it in the broader context anyway? Sana, if I could just if I could just add one part, um, recently I reached to one of our advisors about a year back, um, and this this is a very difficult question to answer. But my problem statement was um, there's a struggle between the 13 year old and the 30 year old in me, um, and um, I want to retain the 13 year old because uh, I know I'm doing all this because of the 13 year old. But there's also an expectation to be the 30 year old, um, and that's the struggle. So yeah, I mean to say. It's it's a good question and I don't think I have an answer, but at least I'm looking for that answer. I I definitely want to be uh, childlike, uh, but I'm hoping with the beard people will take me a little more seriously. So that's the hope. <laughs> and I just want to add one little thing to that because I think it's a very interesting question. I also feel that sharing it with our teams is very important um, it, learning and experience for me that if you are going through a trans like a question a dilemma um, anything that's kind of feeling like it's untrue in my life now which was maybe true before share it with your team do a huddle think about it together and it doesn't feel like then it feels like a journey as opposed to you're changing your ideologies or perspective or like you know a, a technical thing as opposed to an experiential thing yeah, and something that we have to keep reminding myself because it just, just doesn't get easier. Um, we have another question. Have you ever felt like giving up what you are doing? Krishna yeah. is responding to all of it in our head. We can see it. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna go you... ahead. Okay. Um, every morning I watch the news, I feel like giving up. Uh, yeah. I'm not kidding. It's it's a simple answer. It's not a possibly not a great answer for a panel to specifically talk about uh, resilient societies. But honestly, the news is hard, and every morning it makes me want to give up. But I think it's it also makes me want to do it more. And some days I have the energy, and some days I don't. And yeah. both are okay. Yeah, both are okay. Since we didn't hear from Rajesh, and uh, yeah, after Krishna, when I look in the mirror. Because I think you just don't have it, girl. You're like, you know, what are you doing? Get somebody better to do this. And you realize it doesn't matter. Do what you can. So adding on the layers to, I think the process is similar, but uh, different prompts, I guess, for each of us. Should we take the next question? And since we have, I mean, it's open to all, but I would also urge Rajesh to come in. Um, how do our leaders start and plan their days? Um. Let's see, I do various things, but most recently I've been taking my puppy out for a walk. Oh. That's how I start my day. Um, and, uh, and I think that being with a being who really doesn't care about human uh, ideas all that much really helps me uh, situate the work that we are doing in this larger context. Uh, and I think that also helps me then I identify the one thing that I really want to get done that day. So um, uh, independent of whether it's the puppy or not, that's usually the way I start my day. So something which ends with, okay, he, if I get this one thing done, I can say that that day was at least not a failure. Okay. Um, yeah, one last question before we go into round two. If your parents were in the audience right now, what would you want to say to them? We're having an Oscar moment here now. <laughs> Natasha, you threw a very difficult question. Can I take a stab at it? Absolutely. I think there are many pending conversations that I want to do with my parents. So I will just like do some mock rehearsal here. Um, <laughs> I want to tell them that your love story in 70s, when you fell in love, fought with your parents, got married, has been my biggest source of most motivation. Um, and I'm so much in the idea of love, not just romantically, but like with the state, with the country, with the people and all of that. And I want you to know that. I might have turned out differently as you would have thought of, uh, but it was all your values. And I want you to be patient with me. I also want to tell you there are many things that I don't share with you. Um, and 
yeah, so at some point I will. And at some point I want you to ask me how I'm doing. Um, yeah, I think Con Connell West said, justice is what love looks like in public. So I think love is not just romantic. So thanks so much for sharing that, Aprajita. We're going to clip that and send it to you so that you can share it with your parents. Um, anyone else wants to take this? I think it's a very um, lovely question. Okay. I may go. Yeah. I, I, I just to go quickly. My, sorry. Yeah, sorry. all of you go. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I just want to tell my mom that she is a feminist because she raised a feminist daughter, even if she did not be a feminist in the ways she thought one should be. Thank you. I, think yeah, I was just going to say uh, uh, what Aprajita said, like really grateful for the values and the experiences that given me. Uh, but I also want to tell my parents that, you know, the exams are over. So I think <laughs> stop fretting about uh, you know, them and, uh, who's got the, you know, uh, first place uh, uh, in, in, in whatever, you know, award and reward that exists out there. So, yeah. 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 It's not no longer marks. It's like apartments and land and car. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think Kuldeep wanted to go. Uh, you know, so one is definitely uh, I'm I'm thankful that my dad migrated from Guntur to uh, Bangalore. So I'm very thankful uh, for that. But um, also, I would just like want them to stop asking me what exactly do you do and why do they ask you to talk about your work in so many panels? Because I've not understood that. Like it's it's humiliating now. Like whenever somebody calls them and what does your son do, they don't have an answer. Uh, so I'm from a garbage collector to working in schools, and yeah, if they can just stop asking that, that'll be great. Yeah, I think we should have a question that says, tell us how your parents describe your job to others. Uh, I, I am going to take one last question because we do have some. OK, how? Oh, yeah. OK, no, it is about you. How would a friend, family member or a colleague describe you? But I'm going to take the liberty of the moderator and say, describe your work. Like, how does your I'm going to use this prompt from um, sorry, Sneha. Um, as to how does if you could you could explain how they describe you and your work. So anybody can go. So I'm doing justice to you, Sneha. So I'll try to answer more the you than the work, but I think it actually uh, it says both. Uh, one of my friends who I had not seen for a very long time, in fact, for about 15 years, in the time that they uh, all had a child who was now four or five years old at that time. So she told me that whenever her son uh, feels, looks like he's dreamy and he's lost in whatever imaginative world he's in and he uh, is not listening to her, she calls him Rajesh and asks <laughs> him to stop doing that. Is that also how you would describe, you think they describe your work? I, that I will leave. If there are any <laughs> colleagues of mine who are listening, go ahead and tell me if that's true or not. Okay. Anyway, I, I, I would hope they would. Yeah, yeah. Kuldeep, do you know how people, how you, how your friends and family describe you? Uh, family, I don't think make an effort to describe <laughs> me. But friends, uh, um, I think, uh, like, yeah, uh, the way they describe our work is um, uh, these guys are doing something on the ground to solve local issues. Um, that's the like what local issue they don't know. So I remember one of my friend's sister was getting married and there was a garbage spot and they called me and they said, can you get this garbage spot cleared? So that's the uh, description of our work. And how do they describe me? Um, I, I, I'm not sure that Trina and Tarun here, probably they know me better so they could describe me, but I don't know how friends describe me. We keep so that for an offline. Kuldeep uh, is the Rahul Dravid of the ecosystem. So, you know, much <laughs> young talent. So. Yeah, the inside joke is he's the Rahul Dravid, and hopefully I'm the VBS Lakshman from. <laughs> from <laughs> so flattering, Kuldeep. Um, okay, so on that really fun note, let's move on to round two. Um, it's 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 a faster pace, but uh, round here. Uh, but here we would like um, one of you to tag the other. So Tarun, since you spoke last, I want you to tag. Who should answer this? I'll I'll read out the question first, and then you get to choose who should answer the next question, and then that person you know goes on. So, um, 
So the first question is um, three words or phrases that the development sector should stop using forever. And I, I would love the audience to uh, put in their comments as well. And we'll probably make an article out of it. But yeah, Tarun, you can pick the person who should answer this. I'll tag up Rajita. <laughs> 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 I kind of sense this. Uh, the first word, empowerment. We stop using that word. Uh, please stop using the word equality because we have come beyond that. We need to talk about equity. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I can't think of a third word. So uh, I'm dying to say a third word. Please, Trina. Can I tag sustainability. <laughs> That's my sustainability, scalability. All the S words. Take them all out. <laughs> I think we have scale, we have poor, we have stakeholder, beneficiary. Yeah, yeah we have all of that there. Synergy. Thanks, Kuli. The S words are flowing now. Okay, great. So, Aprajita, you can tag the next person. If you could take over the organization of one other person in this room, who would it be and why? And RNP takes no responsibility for any broken relationships out of this question. So Aprajita, you can tag who okay. should take this question. Okay, let me tag uh, Krishna. Krishna, is it? Um, it's an hat trick. You're, <laughs> you're, you, you are on mute. <laughs> Apologies. Um, I try and take over Rajesh's Socrates. Not because I think I could do a better job, but because <laughs> if I didn't have this job, that's where I'd want a job right now. So it's that's like my uh, invasive way. And um, no, I think because I, I really love their work. I love what they're doing. And, uh, you know, and, uh, and apologies, everyone else, if I'm not trying to take you over, it's probably because I don't know uh, enough about your work to want to get my paws in there as well. But um, no, but I, I totally, totally um, um, love what Socrates tries to do. I love their aims. And um, that is one place where I'd love to, you know, go breathe some hell. Anyone else thinking of any takeovers here? It's an open question. Trina's just asked if we can take over r &P. Oh, Trina wants to take over r &P? Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, great. All right. Okay, so Krishna, you get a tag who should take this question. Tell us uh, about the first... Wait, 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 you can listen to the question so that you can be more clever about this. And then tag. Are you not able to hear? Sorry, I lost you for just a moment. Could I trouble you to repeat that last bit? Ah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll state the question I was saying. Um, tell us about the first four meetings on your calendar from Monday this week. Um, I don't know if this allows us to share your calendars but i we, we just want you to open your calendars and tell us first four meetings who krishna okay we've lost krishna um okay so i am just randomly going to say trina you can choose who should answer this question um let me choose rajesh um wow so now let me look at my calendar uh, and see what we ha uh, had on monday it's uh, kind of amazing. So, okay, I had, so here's the most interesting thing that happened to me uh, last Monday. Um, I had a long conversation with a, um, with a, in fact, a colleague of mine where we were uh, creating a comic together. So that was actually the first conversation of the day. It says Rajesh plus Srini. So I think that that's, that's what it was. Um, then I had a conversation with, uh, oh God, I have so many meetings. It's really awful that I have four, four hours of meetings on a Monday morning, uh, but um, that's the way life is. I had another conversation with a person who might be hoping to hire at Socrates, uh, who is a dear friend in other ways. Uh, but uh, who was herself uh, the head of another organization, but is now moving on. So Krishna, if you, um, so, and I maybe uh, this is also a time for me to say that Krishna, uh, you also have a job offer waiting for you uh, at Socrates if you, if you want. <laughs> Unfortunately, she left the stage. I don't know if it's a sign of any sorts, Rajesh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so that's the second meeting. And then um, I talked to my parents because I was going to, I was still in the US on Monday and I was leaving for India on Tuesday. So the next call I had was with my parents, which would have been Monday evening for them and Monday morning for me. Rajesh, you should put your calls with your parents on your calendar. I put my, uh, this particular call I did, yes. Actually, I have, so the answer is that uh, during COVID, I created a, so we talk, me and my parents and my brother talk uh, three times a week at exactly the same time. So I blocked everybody's calendar at that time. I'm so. thinking this is a genius trick I'm going to steal, Rajesh, because currently this system of they can call me whenever they want this yeah. calendar invite seems much more efficient. I'm gonna there steal that go. one. There you go. Um, and there was no other meeting that day, but I think it was also because I was leaving and I knew that I didn't want to fill up my time. Thanks for sharing that and thanks for giving us ideas of how to plan our family talk time as well. Okay, so now you can choose who should answer the next question. If you could send a letter to the third wave of the pandemic, what would it say? Two or three things. Okay, I will tag Srina to answer that question. Thank you. Shahana, will you repeat the question for me once? If you could send a letter to the third wave of the pandemic, what would you tell the pandemic? You know, I know you're going to come, but just some heads up would be nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's that's what I would say. I think I'm very much in the phase of like, this is what the world is going to look like from now on. But I just, my only hope is we have time, resources, ability, intention to plan for it. That's all. So just, just give us a heads up. We'll handle the rest third wave. And I hope it comes and goes like in a jiffy and does not stay for long <laughs> yeah yeah i don't think we can say i'm even afraid to say these things out loud so i'll ask for the the least offensive thing from the third wave just heads up great okay so the next question tina you can tag if you had to what would you rebrand your organization and why so i think there are only a few people who are left to answer this uh can i ask tarun Uh, could you repeat, Sahana, rebrand the organization? Yeah, yes. if you could rebrand Indus Action, what would it be and why? I think it's taken a lot of effort to build this brand itself. I remember in our initial days, one of our board members is like, you have too many brands going around because we had Project Eklavya, we had the Partner Entrepreneur Network and everything was a brand. So, you know, we, we tried a lot to cut all the other brands and you know, focus on just Indus Action as a brand. Uh, but I think I'd maybe name something which uh, kind of uh, was a symbol of the constitution. Uh, so it was spoke closer to Samvidhan, closer to constitution uh, to reflect uh, that ethos. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. Um, so I guess we only have Kuldeep left, right? Um, you are called to do something brave and your fear is real and stuck in your throat. What's the first thing you do? You're on mute. First, you'll unmute. <laughs> OK, the first thing um, I would do is probably have a cup of coffee. That's it. That's it. Yeah. OK, great. <laughs> OK, um, Okay. so that was the end of round two. But we're going to do the next third round is where, again, we I ask, I call one of you, and you ask a question to um, the others. So this is like a mandatory round. Um, so Rajesh, you get the first turn. You can ask one or more questions to anybody. OK. Um, let me ask this question. If Krishna is there, since she uh, said, if you if you did take over my organization, since you now have the liberty to do so, uh, what what's the first thing you would do differently? I okay, I'm not on mute this time. Sorry, <laughs> just checking. 
Um, I think I would ask the entire team to reconsider their methods for how they plan to get to where you want to get to. Or not reconsider, sorry, introspect on the methods and the philosophy behind them. So when so this, when you this, this Rajesh knows the context of this <laughs> so when you when you when you dropped out, he said he wanted to hire you. So you you might get an offer letter very soon, and the first job is already there. So Krishna, you get to ask the next question to somebody in the team. Great. Uh, thank you. Um, I would want to ask. Um, you know, since particularly since. Uh, Kuldeep mentioned that he would have coffee if he were uh, being called on to talk about, do something particularly brave. Um, I would want to ask that, what do you do when in your heart of hearts you believe you failed? Oh, yeah. when I believe I have failed, I, I one is just uh, how difficult it is to accept it. Uh, that in itself takes a lot of time to accept it. So first you go through this struggle of rationalizing it, externalizing it. Um, uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm not responsible and things like that. Um, the second thing is like, um, I've been told I'm very hard on myself. So now I have like, say half a dozen people, I check that, you know, is this actually a failure or this is something again, I have uh, created in my head. And then just accept it, uh, share it and move on. Like there's nothing much uh, you can do, but by now, Krishna, I have failed so much that now this has become like second nature. Like if I have not failed enough, uh, I start getting uh, worried. Like there was a joke in college. If I'm not, uh, if I'm not nervous, I don't perform uh, in competitions when I was in college. So probably if I don't fail enough, I don't think I perform. So yeah, just um, first uh, go through that um, check in, then check in with people that is this really a failure or I have created this in my head and then accept it and move on. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my response. Kuldeep, you get to choose who and what the question should be. Yeah, so my question, I've always wanted to ask Trina this question. Trina had an obsession with Ranveer Singh uh, uh, and her uh, and his abs. And uh, I'm a huge Deepika Padukone fan, and I didn't approve of her choice when it came to Ranveer Singh. I'm sorry, I'm stating this. So why Ranveer Singh, Trina? Like, I really want to know that. I, I'm happy to tell you, but I should start off by saying that I'm over it. He 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 sided with a political ideology that I do not subscribe to. So I actually, in protest, unfollowed him on all platforms. I don't believe he's noticed, but it's significant in my life. Um, so Kuldeep, I'll actually give a funny but also a serious answer. And I think when I look back at my life, I feel like all of media teaches women to like this exact kind of like toxic leather jacket wearing drug high alpha male and like in and you know like in real life of course i can't actually seriously like men like that because that's so harmful so then at least in my fantasy life i can live out that socialization that i've been subjected to this has to be the best question and answer <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for that question, Kuldeep. Uh, okay, Trina, you can ask a question. Unfortunately, Kuldeep's already answered. So it has to go to somebody else. Um, let me ask Aprajita. Um, if you could be any one other person in the world for a day, uh, who would you be and what would you do being them? Fantastic. That's that's also a kind of fantasy that I like to live in sometimes. Um, I want to be um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's secretary and I want to see how she works, what she does, how does she her day look like, how does she organize in the middle of a political campaign at the same time. Um, that's what I want to do. AOC, AOC for the win. Um, yeah, now your turn up, Rajta. Okay, um, my question, and this this question is also coming from like some of the conversations that I've really admired uh, having with Tarun. Um, Tarun, how important is, um, what is your relationship between means and the end? What's more important to you, the means or the end um, or both and how? How do you draw the distinction and what matters to you? 
uh, means for sure. I think uh, I've had many instances where I had to choose. Uh, I think the question that came to mind is, uh, you know, uh, you know, what would want, uh, what would be kind of, uh, what is it that would come to mind in my last moment of breath? So I think it's kind of the means that we've chosen. Uh, or I'll quote Albus Dumbledore, right? So. Uh, you know, uh, I think Harry, like, you know, it's the friends we keep, like, you know, uh, in, in that last moment of death, uh, those are the things that matter. Uh, so, yeah, I think, you know, means definitely over ends. Lovely. Um, you get to ask the final question. Rajesh, right? Yes, you do. Awesome. Uh, so, Rajesh, if you had to choose one among us uh, to go to jail with, who would that be and why? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, that's a tough question. Um, I, let me say, okay, I'm going to just, just based on what I saw, the person with the most pets. So I think that's Trina. You, how are my pets going so, to help I mean, us? I, in I would say that the more animals, some, like the, my general view of humanity is that uh, the more you have animals in your life, the better you are. And so um, so that's my general criteria. I was, uh, thank you for choosing me, Rajesh. If that question came to me, I was actually thinking I'd choose you because you look the toughest. That's my answer. It's not like a good human being criteria. I'm like, who can beat people up for me in jail? Okay. <laughs> I would have chosen you too. <laughs> There you, go. Thank you. there you go. That's some mutual love there. We have one question from the audience before we go to the final closing round. That is from Shraddha. What's your pitch to Miss French or Miss Scott? I would let one person take it. Anybody? If you want to pitch that. Is that? I can try. Asking? I don't know if I'll get the money, but we are the <laughs> AWS of uh, Social Protection India. I don't know if that will work, but yeah. let's hope. <laughs> I, I, I have a feeling that that might not be the best pitch under the circumstances. <laughs> Okay, great. All right. So um, we're coming to the closing part. For, for the final part of our session, you know, we, I mean, this is just a testimony of it. We often, between Gautam, me, uh, Natasha, and Roni, and the, you know, the rest of us, we often discuss how like fortunate and grateful we are to have the companionship of leaders like you who are part of our portfolio. And especially during difficult times like this, the pandemic and, you know, all the related stuff. I feel, um, these words of Charles Darwin, that I'm going to take the liberty to reverse order it, seems appropriate. It was the worst of times. It was the best of times. It was the winter of despair. It was the spring of hope. And on that final note, the closing question to each of our panelists, and I would love our audience to also kind of share your thoughts on this August day, um, is what gives you hope for our future? And all of you can go in any random order. Dogs. We've got dogs. Yeah. I can go. I can start. Um, I think as human beings, um, one of our basic, uh, very basic instincts is to communicate, is to have dialogue, is to understand, want to try to understand the other person. And I think knowing that deep inside us that's there is what gives me hope. You know, I'd like to read out what Shraddha also put on the chat um, about Meera Devi, what Meera Devi from our previous panel said, my belief in my ability to show up and make a difference. Um, and, and, you know, we echo that for all of you, um, for what you do. Yeah. Um, okay. Who next? Rajesh? I want to give a very cliched answer that nevertheless I believe in, which is that when I see, you know, people my daughter's age, uh, who are completely irreverent, are deeply committed to making the world a better place, and um, are not afraid of doing whatever it takes. I feel like, okay, um, it's going to suck, but uh, the world is in good hands. Thanks. Faith in humanity, till we have art, music, laughter, I have hope. This is some answers from the 
audience approach this and you and it yeah um i think it was i was struggling to like kind of think about this for a while then i started doing this um legacy meditation kind of thing and i call it there's nothing called legacy meditation but uh, what i do is i think about my nani and what legacy has she left and then i think about my niece who's 4 years old um my nani is no more but my niece is 4 years old and i think about what is the legacy that she wants to raise a toast for me and and i draw those linkages and i feel that somewhere it just feels very hopeful that i know that things have shifted from my nani to me and things will move and shift from me to my niece um and somewhere that feminine energy just gives me a lot of power so yeah that's my hope that's lovely that's something i think we should we could all use and do a bit of tarun yeah I, i could go next like as aprajita was sharing uh, i i kind of got reminded of this exercise uh, of a 200 year letter um, so the exercise is very simple think of the oldest member in your family and uh, you know think of the youngest member in your family so imagine say like say your youngest niece and if you like they grow as old as uh, the oldest member and the oldest member is as young as the youngest member so Say, let's say your grandmother or grandfather. Like, think of when they were two year old, and think of your niece or nephew as being, say, ninety year old, a hundred year old, uh, and just write. Uh, imagine both of them writing a letter to each other. So, and I think whenever I do this exercise, I feel very hopeful uh, about you know where we started and where we could possibly be. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think like we kind of obviously get drawn to everyday headlines, which uh, you know draw a lot of. Uh, Uh, you know uh, the headlines are definitely disturbing and the current moment of history uh, kind of uh, you know uh, gives us uh, a lot to be unhopeful about but i think the trend lines uh, are are very hopeful and uh, so yeah i am very hopeful that uh, in in a larger span of time uh, the scales do tilt towards justice yeah thank you tarun kuldeep yeah so uh, this is not a plug in but i think the sol ninjas like the people i work with give me a lot of hope um, uh, like just yesterday evening um, somebody just called up uh, and like i've not been in touch with this person for four or five years and just said that you know uh, you know i've decided that this is what i'm going to do all my life and um, you know thank you for being a part of that journey like that really gave me hope that's one and secondly like also uh, the peer group uh, like some of the friends here uh, in this group like you when when you're down and out and when you like need to feel good that you can move forward then when you see this kind of a peer group or a or a running mate i think that also gives you a lot of hope so for me it's, it's a people i work with um, or work for and people i work with so they give me hope lovely anyone else before we finally close no just to clarify i wasn't being flippant when i said dogs No, nobody thought of us. <laughs> We took it very seriously. <laughs> no, because I, I, I honestly believe that if they are capable of bestowing us with such uh, loyalty, there must be something worth it in human beings. Probably we just have to access more of that. Totally. And what a hopeful way to end this hour. Special thanks to each of you for spending your Sunday with us. Um, it was, it was fun. It was interesting, and at the same time, so deep that I hope. you know it's shifted something in all of us at least it's done i know with many audience uh, feedback that we're getting and also in me so thank you so much for participating wholeheartedly also special thanks to all our audience through the last 8 hours our speakers over the last 8 hours our team at arita advisors there's such a champ um, the nudge foundation and also especially a spark from nudge rini chanakeshwar thank you everyone have a great sunday <laughs>